Hey guys, what's going on? This is Robert. I have a video lesson today for you on how to write a riff. So, this seems pretty simple, and um, to most people it's real easy to come up with a riff. Um, you know, when you're jamming with someone, you know, you guys might trade off just jamming over. Any kind of riff that you can come up with. But when you're first um, learning how to write riffs, it's funny because you actually have to learn how to write them. So, and a lot of it comes from um, knowing your scales. Because if I, if I ask you to write a lick in the key of E, or A, or D, or B, um, a lot of people might not know what to do. You know, some of you might um, go to your pentatonic shapes. Like if I was like, I want to riff out a B, you might go. that could be a riff to jam over something like that like I just came up with that one out of that pentatonic scale but um just a lesson on how to come up with a riff so I think this might be helpful to a lot of people so what we're gonna do is we are gonna do kinda what I just did we're gonna take the pentatonic scale and we're gonna do this first little shape if you don't know it I will put the tabs up on the screen but this is an E pentatonic so on the low E string we're gonna do open third fret <laughs> On the A string, D and G, we're going to do open 2nd fret. On the B, it's open 3rd. On the high E, it's open 3rd. So the reason I picked this one is because it seems to be the easiest to kind of mess around with, and you get this nice convenience of using open strings. So the trick to come up with a riff is kind of having a, a melody or a rhythm to it, because you that you obviously don't want a riff of just I'm sure that could be some kind of riff. To me it's not that musical though. So if I was to, to you know just come up with something on the spot out of the pentatonic scale, I would maybe And that's just, I'm just running that pentatonic scale. Instead of that, I, I gave it a lot more rhythm and a lot more uh, dynamics to your playing of it. So what you want to do is start real simple. So I always give my students to start off with literally just two notes, you know. And what you want to know is, is where your root notes are. So if you don't know what a root note is, um, we could, depending on what key you're in, it's pretty much all the E. So if we're in the key of E, it's all of your E notes. If you're in the key of A, it's all of your A notes. And it just goes all over the place. So the first one, uh, as far as in this little bit of the scale, is you have your open E string. You have second fret on the D, and you have your high E string because your E strings are obviously E notes. So those are notes that you kind of want to end on. That's the point of the root note. It kind of pulls everything together at the end of a lick or just like a riff. So if I'm playing a guitar lick, it kind of it seems incomplete until I hit that E note. Okay, so it's important to know where your, your root notes are when you're coming with riffs. Now, there are notes you can end on that aren't root notes, but we're not going to mess with those right now. So, um, start really simple with a riff. So, if I was to take apart what I just played, if I can even remember what I just did, um, I, would, I would start with this. That would be my riff. So, I'm literally just hitting the low E string open twice. 3rd fret on the low E, twice, pull off to an open. So it's pretty simple and it'd be kind of a boring riff. So once you get your basic kind of like groundwork done, that's when you want to add in all the little bits and that's where the scale really comes into play. So if I was to play that riff, I would go... just running around playing in and out of that scale. So that's kind of is how you come up with a riff. Um, some little tips would be is take all the little things that you've learned, all the hammer-ons, the muting, all that stuff, and it's really going to give you this big, like, diverse sound versus everything just being... You know, 
because I did a lot of palm muting. You know, instead of picking everything, I did some hammer-ons or some trills. And there's all these little bend riffs that I was doing. And that's just from, you know, years and years of, like, com like compiling all these little techniques. And it really, really adds to creating good guitar riffs. Because um, playing solos is one thing, and it's really cool and fun, but in, in a band setting, 90% of the stuff you do is going to be rhythm work. So, you definitely want to have a good rhythm. Uh, some tips for coming up with rhythms. Honestly, a lot of them, I don't even know where they come from. To be totally honest, I'd kind of just start playing, and then like a riff would come out of nowhere. <laughs> You know, it, for me, it, it works out good. I just kind of I start messing around on a scale, and a riff kind of comes. Um, stuff I've done in the past is I would come up with little um, beats, kind of like. They kind of be like the rhythm that I just did. The and so what would be another one? It'd be like a. So if I was gonna turn that into a riff, I'd be like... You can hum stuff. I've I've recorded little like tracks on my my phone, just going like do 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 do, you know, and, and that would maybe end up being like a riff of some kind. So those are just some pointers on how to write some riffs. Hopefully that helps. Um, it's stuff that I've used, and it seems to help a lot of my my students. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Rock on, peace out, and rock. <laughs>